Welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be covering the frame assembly and also running the belts. And then eventually, towards the end of the video, I'll be covering how to tighten the belts and uh, tune them using the pan and tuner hertz method. As always, thanks for watching and hope this is helpful for you. Okay, so if you have the LDO kit, you're probably only going to have five different types of extrusion that I, that I have shown here. So this may get a little confusing. In the manual, you're gonna see that there's more than that, right? But really the only difference between some of these extrusions is that some are drilled on the ends and some aren't. So I'm gonna talk about that for a second. Okay, so I've just written a little note on what the different extrusions are and how they map to what's in the manual. So you're gonna have four one-hole extrusions. Those are E in the manual. Um, and I went ahead and laid these out in different groups like I have here, which I would re definitely recommend doing because you want to keep track of them and not mix them up. Then you're going to have um, four two-hole extrusions, which are here. They're going to have a hole here and here. Um, and that's not to be confused with the, and those are, first of all, those are extrusions C and H. And don't confuse those with the two three-hole extrusions, which are a little tricky. So you can see that there's two holes, or there's... There's two holes on the ends, and there's one hole that way. So one thing that I did on my original build was I accidentally used a two-hole extrusion, and then I had to go back and change it. So that's why you want to make sure you keep these grouped and separated, and I recommend grouping them by the number of holes. And then lastly, you're going to have your three-hole extrusions here. Or I'm sorry, your two-hole extrusions here, and these are all the same. So the reason that you have fewer extrusions types than what's in the manual is that all the extrusions are going to have this M3 tapped at the end. So in the manual, um, there are some like in the case of these two hole extrusions where, you know, one of them has a tap at the end and one doesn't. But for, from a manufacturing perspective, it's actually easier just for them to go ahead and tap everything. Before you get started with your build, make sure you have plenty of these hex nut pieces. I'm actually printing more right now. These are going to be the drop in hex nuts um, that you basically, you don't really drop them in, you slide them in, but these are going to hold the hex nut pieces in place. So when you tighten down your screw, um, these, these nuts don't move around. So you can use these just about every, everywhere in the build. And you definitely want to have, you probably need around a hundred, 120 just to be safe. Something I missed in my original build was adding this cable chain link at the very beginning. So I just want to call that out. Definitely don't forget that. Fortunately, the manual has been updated and it calls it out much more clearly. Something I really like about the LDO kit is these uh, nut carriers that, that are included. So you can either use the 3D printer ones or you can use these uh, LDO nut carriers. I, I'm going to use these because I think it's a much better interface. You don't have to worry about plastic being in there. And as you can see, those just slide in really easily, nice and uh, they are a little loose in here but once they're in, they don't move around too bad. Something else I really like about this kit is these rails. Um, there's actually very little, if any, oil or grease on them, unlike the last rails that I used. So you can just see how easily these kind of slide. So there's really no gunk or oil on here. Okay, when you're building your cube, I just thought I'd offer a little tip on checking the square. So you want to be able to tap each corner and make sure that nothing's wobbling when you do that tap. So you can kind of check this by looking at the bottom corner. And you can also kind of listen. So, And if you do happen to notice something bouncing or wobbling, what I would recommend is tackling at each corner first. So you may need to, oftentimes what you might see is a little gap down here. And if that's the case, you can just loosen up the screws here there's going to be, like for the corners in the front, there's going to be a top screw, and then one on the front, one on the side. Loosen that up, and then you're going to have to hold this down, and then retighten starting on the bottom. It's definitely important to have this thing nice and square. The best way you're going to get that is by building on a flat surface. A lot of these tables, like just a regular plastic table or something, it's just going to have some waviness to it, so I wouldn't recommend building on that. I use this Permatex. It works out really good, and I try to lock tight with this technique. Helps having a magnetic driver. But you really want to try to avoid getting getting it on the uh, ABS parts. It's not ideal, but you can always come in and wipe it off. Okay, at this point, what I want to do is 
temporarily affix <clears throat> this piece. I, th I think it just makes running your belts a little bit easier when you have it. So before you do that, take your belt and then um, <clears throat> you're gonna run, we're gonna do the top one, so that's the left side. I'm gonna do that one first. So run your, <clears throat> run your belt through just like this. Through the top channel. All right, so I've got the belt in there. I just like to do this because otherwise this thing flops around and moves around on you. So just again, just go ahead and temporarily, you probably want to use two screws. And these are going to come right out as soon as we get to the other side, but I just like kind of keeping it in position. And this is about how much belt I usually leave. Um, the other thing, make sure that your both two pieces can fit through here. If not, you can take a little square file or something and file that out a little bit. It's also helpful to put one of these little stoppers here in the rail if you if you still have one. That way it holds things in place while you're pulling. Next up, I'll take my belt and I'm <clears throat> I've got to run it through this top pulley here. This is a little tricky because it's open, so I use a. I typically will use a screw just to kind of help direct it. You just want to really keep it there. It's a good tip. Just kind of keep things from moving. And then try not to twist your belt either. You don't want that. If you twist it, you're going to have to go back and uh, fix that. At this point, it's not as critical to worry about it staying in the channel, but uh, we'll go back and check that before we get things tightened up too tight. Okay, now we're gonna come around this front one here. And then we're gonna pass the gantry. So you're not gonna use this, <clears throat> you're not gonna do anything here because there's a spacer and you don't need this bottom one. That's for the other side of the belt that we're gonna run or for the, for the lower belt, I should say. All right, now when we get to this point, this is where it gets a little tricky. You want to come and you want to make sure that you don't go in too soon. You want to come past this pulley with the belt. So we're going to run it and then you want to go in between the motor. So it's going to look like this. And then you're going to see as you insert that in, you'll see the top of the belt there. And then you may want to use, so you can see the top of the belt. You may want to use some pliers like this just to kind of route it through. And then once it comes out, you just kind of <clears throat> just want to grab it. You can do it like this too. But you want to be able to grab it with a pair of pliers and be able to pull it through. And then just uh, carefully, just carefully pull everything through. And of course, the, the way the teeth are oriented are very important. So if you, you can't run this the you know backwards, because <laughs> it needs to be able to the teeth need to be able to grip in the top of the motor there. All right, and at this point, it's a good idea to make sure your everything's aligned well. So make sure these are between the flanges. Look at your motor. Make sure that everything looks lined up, and the motor uh, pulley isn't higher. Mine looks pretty good there. There we go. So you definitely want to make sure that everything's moving and is aligned. If it's not, particularly right in here, um, like the edge of the belt might get frayed or you might have alignment issues. Now, if it is aligned, you can see that there's a, a grub screw. So that black screw right there, you can loosen that and then you have to loosen the second one. And then, so loosen, loosen those with your tool and then simply use your hand to adjust it and then you can retighten it and now we're going to keep going to the other side so we're just going to come around the back there's really nothing to do here just kind of goes in between 
That's this pulley in the corner. And now we're gonna route through to the front end. So you're not gonna do anything with this motor on the top one. That's gonna be for the other side. So you're just gonna stay on the top track here. And then you're just gonna insert it through here. And now we gotta put it on the other side of the carriage. So now I'm gonna have to loosen the carriage here and insert it. So I'll go ahead and do that. So you're gonna insert it right between the other one. This, this can get a little challenging because there's not, you know, that hole's pretty tight. If you're having problems, just um, file it out a little bit more. Okay, so there you go. I like pulling them both together. And then what you want to do is um, you really want these to be the same length on both sides. So that just helps you later. But, and then if, <clears throat> if you haven't got your belts yet, you know, get about this much length, you can reduce it. We're ultimately going to be cutting maybe about 10 millimeters here when we mount it. So I cut mine a little too long. Now with the LDO kit, I think there's enough belt to normally run it maybe two sets of belts. So you'd probably want to cut it closer to down here and then you'd have enough. Okay, the second belt's very similar. Um, really the only difference here is I'm going to run it to, to the right. Answered about the same amount. Make sure you insert it the right way. We're gonna have to do the little screw trick again. Otherwise it'll just wanna come out the side here. Okay. We're gonna go around, around the front, just like we did on the other one. And same drill here. So we're gonna come after this pulley and then insert it right where the motor is. You may need to use your pliers once again to help push it through. All right, there we go. And we're gonna pull the belt through. All right, now it should look like that. So you've got, kind of coming here, you're skipping over that spacer. You've got the pulley there. Same drill, we're just gonna bring it around the back. It should align with these two pulleys, no problem. And if you're seeing any kind of alignment issues, or I guess obviously if a pulley's not where it needs to be, these bearings I should say, uh, maybe you got your the thing wrong, it's pretty easy to take these off and reposition them. Okay, then we're gonna bring it around. And then lastly, we're gonna route it through here. I'd say the motors are probably the most challenging part of it, but none of it's really that challenging. Just feed it through. Okay, there we go. That's how it should look. Now we're going to repeat and just insert it back through this carriage. So insert your belt. If you're having a problem inserting, remember you can clear that area out. You want it pretty loose like what I've got here. Just pull that through. I've got a heck of a lot of belt there. That's okay. We're going to take care of that shortly. Alright, so now I'm going to just kind of center things up. Not that it really matters, but so I want these belts to be the same length as these. Okay, now I've pretty much got everything where I want it before I cut. So I made this bottom one the same length as the top one. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut. Before you cut it though, make sure that everything is pretty tight because um, you really want these the same length. All right, so there we go. Now we're going to put in the maker beam nuts here and then we can really start tensioning it. These are the maker beam nuts here. We're going to take those out of the bag. And basically, the easiest way to do it, I think, is to hold it over the screw here. You kind of have to hold it in place. <clears throat> and then tighten it from this side. I find it much easier to do it this way than to do it to run the belts when they're on. 
Okay, and you're gonna have to let out a little bit of back sl uh, belt slack to get these in. Um, and you don't wanna fully tighten it, but you wanna tighten it enough where it's not gonna flop out. So there's one of them done. And you just repeat for the other side. Okay, at this point you're gonna wanna tighten, now that you've got the maker beam nuts in there, and my, I would say keep them as loose as you can without them falling out, because we're still gonna need to do some final tightening. And um, again, this is how I do it. I think it works pretty well. So there's not much uh, room in there, but you do need to be able to tighten your belts. Try to keep them where you can pinch them like this. You can either use pliers or just your fingers, which is how I'm doing it for now. And I still haven't connected anything yet, so I'm gonna do that last. And what I find a little bit easier here is to pull it one at a time. And you wanna maintain those that equal length because the minute that these are not equal is when you have uneven tension, particularly on the top and bottom. So I just kinda of do this until I get it tensioned just where I want it. And when you're doing your belt tightening and tensioning, I like to put my gantry all the way back because um, you want to kind of keep an eye on the distances here so you don't get any racking. You're going to get some as you tighten it, but that'll help you kind of keep an eye on things. So ideally, you want to maintain this gap where there's really no gap on either side. If you see a gap, then you're probably going to have to pull one of the belts. The other thing that you need to do is make sure everything is riding in the correct spot. So if you see anything that's off, like maybe this belt, one of these belts is above the, the outside of the flange of the bearing, then that's not going to work very well. The other thing that I'll mention is don't tighten these yet. That's what you want to do at the final step is tighten these. And then you're going to probably want to lock them down. Um, but just leave them loose for now. So that'll give us some ability to have extra tension later if we need it. Okay, that's, that's getting pretty close. Um, it's still got a little bit of slop in it, so I'm going to try to take some of that out. Okay, it's getting a little better. And just keep repeating until... There's an app that I use called Pano Tuner. Which, uh, you may want to try it if you want to do it with the uh, Hertz tuning method, which is measuring the belt frequency. So at this point, um, you can move your gantry all the way back, and you want your head in the middle. You can do this with or without the tool head on, and you're gonna be testing it on this side and this side. And all you're gonna do is pluck it, and then you're gonna listen to the tone, and you're gonna use your Piano Tuner app. And uh, since I'm recording with my iPhone, I can't show that, but when you pluck this, hold your, hold your microphone up as close as possible to the belt and look at the tone, and ba and you want that tone to be around 110 hertz. Okay, so, so in my case, the belt tension is pretty much the same, but um, you can see there's a tiny bit of gap, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that on this side. And the way that I do that, so I'm gonna take my driver, I'm gonna loosen these two screws, and then I'm just gonna press, you really wanna press in the center, but Kind of keep things centered up so once you loosen them make sure there's no gap on either side and then go ahead and tighten them up that's definitely the easiest way to tension or to de-rack things so that's pretty good sometimes this can be a little challenging to do and you may want to loosen both sides so i'll go oops i'll go ahead and do yeah you know, the, the problem is here you've already got the screw installed so you can't really you'll have to remove this if you really want to be able to loosen both which isn't a big deal there's only two screws there mine's looking good so that's pretty much it on the belts then go ahead and just secure this to your carriage